Hi everyone, JJIR here, and in this video we're going to see how to install Terminator on a Chromebook that has the Linux container activated. So the advantage of using Terminator instead of the classical Linux container terminal is that Terminator is able to be transparent and you can actually scroll very easily. And there's another couple options there that you can also have. So the, the idea here is just to add this terminal, the Linux terminal, so we can play around a little bit easier with the things we want to do within the Linux terminal. So the first thing you need to do, obviously, is have Linux installed. And on top of that, if you want to change Debian to Ubuntu, I also have a video on that as well. And I'll put that up in the right-hand corner as a link and down in the description below. So the idea here is presupposing you've already gone through the steps of installing and activating the Linux container and doing whatever you need to do. Now what we're going to do is install Terminator within that terminal. So if we pop up the terminal here, and we can make this even bigger if you want, the only thing we're going to do here is we're going to put sudo apt get install, and then we're going to put Terminator. We're going to click on enter here and we're going to let that install everything it needs and then we'll come back and see when it's done. In this case, it's already said that it was installed. If it's the first time you open this up, it may install a whole bunch of other things. It may take up up to five or ten minutes depending on your Wi-Fi speeds. So don't worry about that if it takes a really long time at the beginning because it may be installing other things it needs, especially if this is the first application you're installing. So presupposing that you've done all that and now Terminator is installed, we can close this up now and head on over to the Terminator app itself. Click on leave here. And we'll go down here to the apps and pop this guy up. And as you can see, I have it already here in the application drawer. So we're going to click on this guy here and have him open up. And as you can see, now we have this guy. Now, he doesn't look very special right now, but we're going to set him up so that it looks much, much nicer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to right-click on the terminal itself. And then we're going to go into Preferences so we can start configuring this. So if we click on Preferences, this is what we have here. So there's a lot of things you can do, lots of things especially, but we want to get at least a couple things out of the way to make sure that we don't have problems. So the first thing you want to do is to get rid of the Dbus server. This is the most important step. If you don't get rid of this, then what will happen is the Linux container will crash and you won't be able to use anything. So just make sure you always deselect the dbus server before you jump in here and do anything else. So after you're done with that, you have a few other things here. You have appearance, you have extra styling, windows borders, things like that. So here we're going to get rid of the windows borders. We really don't need windows borders in this case. We want to make it nice and smooth and simple. Then we have tab position, we have homogenous and scroll buttons, we have hide size from title, all these types of things that are here. And the rest of this stuff can pretty much be left alone. Then when we go over to profiles, we have the default, and then we have use system fixed with font. We might just change this here. So we're actually, we're gonna go and get rid of this and we're gonna change this. And we're going to look for some things we want to add here. So I'll come right back once we have that to get those in. So we're going to go back in here and we're going to click on Cuisine Regular. We're going to put this up to 13. And then we're going to select that. That's what I've seen. That's actually fairly good. Here we have right below it says Show Title Bar. We're going to get rid of that. We can allow bold text and rewrap on resize. That's fine. We have shape, we have the cursor shape, we have block, underline, or I-beam if you want. And then you can change the colors there. You also have the title bar icon. We're going to leave that as is for now. Command, we don't have anything there we need to do right now. Here, we can change this. Usually it was gray on black. If you click on that, click on custom. You can actually change a little bit here. You can make this slightly lighter if you need to. Select that. And then afterwards, we're going to go to background here. And this is what I liked to do the transparent background. And here we'll put this up to like 75. And then we go to scrolling. And then we have scroll bar is. And we're going to get rid of the scroll bar to make it even simpler. And then if we go back to global, there's one thing I forgot, which is the window state. Usually I want this on maximized. And now when we have all that, it's all set up. And we can now close this. 
And we close this, this guy sort of disappears, not a problem, we go down here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna exit out of this. And then when we go back in here to open this up, we're going to see that it's going to open up with the format that we wanted. So if we go out here and we put this guy down and then put this guy down over here, put him down. As you can see, we now have a beautiful transparent terminal that we can do everything we want to inside of it. And we can switch back and forth by going through the alt tab switching here. But the nice thing here is that I can have this open and actually have something in the background and I can work on this and see what I'm doing here. So let's say I have instructions and on one of the tabs open then I can go in here and start working on it. And it actually turns out really, really nice. And then the other thing is the basically the scrolling here. In classical terminals, you really can't scroll very much. In this one, it already it's already on, and you can take advantage of it. So these are a couple of things that I found that have been very advantageous for my work here on the Chromebooks while I'm programming. And I hope this also helps you guys. So if you have any questions or comments about this, please leave those in the comment section below the video, and I'll be more than happy to respond to them. Otherwise, if there's anything else, We'll keep in touch and you guys let me know.